Hey guys, welcome to the day after Christmas. Yeah, I got the clown suit on. No, I'm not coming home from work. We're going to a church this morning. There has been a Christmas miracle. Now, you know the S-175 kit guitar. Um, this will be the final episode because we finally have the answer we prayed for. Now, you know this guitar from the last episode has been barrel housing with the likes of R.J. Mishu and headed down that path. Well, there's been some kind of miracle over Christmas, only miracle, kind of miracle that can happen at Christmas. I'm getting confused. I'm being overcome with something. But the Mississippi mudslide is going to do an altar call this morning. And you know that this wood here, Sun House, where Sun House was recorded, where Alan Wilson, who had to teach Sun House, Sun House's own music again. And then between those conversations, between those two, everybody figured out Reuben Lacey, who Sun House used to make fun of and say was playing the devil's music with some bottleneck on his finger and ran him out of town. Well, Reuben Lacey became a minister and yeah, he repented of his barrel house and ways. Now, if you're going to repent and you are a guitar that has this on you, there's no other place to go to do your altar call than that's right, the church of Reuben Lacey. Hey, get in. That armchair you usually get in while you're watching me do all the work. That's all right. But get in. We're fixing to go to Ridgecrest, California and do an altar call for this sinful guitar at Reuben Lacey's church. Now let's go. All right, here we are. Some of you have been here before with me. We are at Reuben Lacey's church on Mono Street in Ridgecrest. Just in time for the 11 o'clock service. Tons of stuff, and you realize halfway through that I don't even remember doing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember one uh, one week I was on my way to work and I turned at the light on uh, on 10th Street West, and I got all the way through the light, was pulling into the driveway on my uh, job, and realized I don't remember if the light was green or red. <laughs> I, it's normally green when I get to that point, so I guess in my mind I assumed that it was going to still be green and I just went on through the light and, and, and I realized in that moment that you have to be mindful of what you're doing, but how often do we do things and we're not mindful of what we are doing because we're just so used to doing it. And so when we have a situation like this, it kind of makes us uncomfortable by the same token it also causes us to be more mindful of what we're doing. Okay, you know, things that I'm doing that I know I shouldn't be doing or the way I'm thinking, there's some things I know I need to change the way I think about some things. And it starts by self-reflection. You can't change a behavior until you know there's something wrong with the behavior. And so that self-reflection allows God to show us ourselves and the things that we may be thinking that are in error, uh, maybe some inward attitudes, uh, all those things that we all have, because we all are in a state of learning how to be godly. Nobody comes into this world ready to do it. We all have to be taught, and we all have to, uh, to learn. And so we're all in a different state of growth, and this is why that self-reflection is going to be so necessary for this. This is one of the things in the new year that we all, I know I need to change, and all of us need to change. We need to learn how to consistently speak well. Amen. Amen. Because we're going to find out some things about words and the seriousness of words so that we can have it fresh in our hearts that we need to do things the way God tells us to do it and not the way we've done it. Proverbs 18 and 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. What does that mean? They that talk too much will eat the fruit of what they say. 
That's essentially what the Lord really, um, really dealt with me about this issue because, um, you know, I'm a Google person. If I if I need to know something, I'm, I'm gonna do Google. Yeah, I'm, I'm one. I'm, I know my son's the same way. I'm gonna do Google. If if, if I need to understand it, I'm gonna Google it. And, and and I had heard that this particular minister had had this problem, and I was kind of like. I wonder if that's really true. Do y'all ever do stuff like that? I wonder if that's really, really true. I said, okay, I tell you what, I'm gonna Google it. And as I was beginning to Google it, I could feel the conviction of Holy Spirit telling me, don't do it. Leave it alone. But no, inquiring minds wanna know. I just wanna know, Lord, if it's really the truth. No, I was taking part in receiving gossip. Wow. And so I pushed Holy Spirit out of the way. Y'all know what that's like, right? When we know we're doing something wrong, we do it anyway. That's pushing Holy Spirit out of the way because I wanted to know. Actually, I wanted to know the gossip. So I Googled that thing, and oh, what I found out. To this day, I wish I had never heard it. I never read it. Because I was no longer able to receive anything from that person. But if I've been buffeted by life, and I've learned to be still, and begin to respond rather than react. Now I become a well of life because that insight, that understanding, that compassion, because I know it's like to hurt like that, I can speak words to others that will help them come out of that place that I once lived in myself. This is why we are allowed to have troubles. This is why we are allowed to go through, not because God wants to see us go through stuff, but because he knows that it softens our heart, gives us understanding and compassion so that when someone comes to us and they've been, and we've been there, we can speak with a heart of compassion because we know what it's like to hurt. We know what it's like to be confused. We know what it's like to be, like I can speak to that young man about being a knucklehead. Why? Because I used to be one. I was that young man some 25, 30 years ago. I was that young man that was confused and didn't know where he was going or how he was going to get there. Mad at everybody, making rash decisions, doing stupid stuff, getting high. Y'all know, you know what I'm talking about, son. Getting high, doing all kinds of dumb stuff. Just dumb stuff. But because I've been there, when someone like one of my sons comes to me, I don't yell at them because they've done, even though they might deserve it. <laughs> I don't yell at them because I know what it's like. And so there's a built-in compassion that I've been there. I know what it's like. I know what it feels like when that person is ashamed, they're hurting, they're scared. They, they feel like everyone's going to judge them because they've done something dumb. But when I really, really, really look at myself, if I spend time in, in any measure of self-reflection, I do understand that I do some of the same things, I just do them differently. Wow. You know, back in the day when we talked about alcohol, you know, uh, 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 some, some would say, well, uh, I drink Colossia. And that was something great. And, then, and they would look at scorn with someone who drank uh, 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 Old English 800. Oh, that was a lesser person because they drank cheap beer as opposed to Colossia or Cordell Brews. But the reality is, I'm still drinking. Amen. Didn't matter whether it was the cheap or the expensive. The end result is if I drink too much, which most people do, I end up drunk. So what difference does it make what I drank to get drunk? I still ended up drunk. In other words, I ended up making the same mistake. I might have been drinking something different, but the end result is the same. We've all fallen short. We all have trips. And so when I remember that in my heart, I'm less likely to judge my son or to judge my friend. Because I know too that if the mirror were put in front of me, I got problems too. How about you? I'm asking you brothers, when you consider God's mercy, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, which, which is holy and acceptable to God, because that's the very least you could do. Don't be conformed to this world. Don't act like everybody else does. 
but get your mind transformed by the renewing from the word. And then that way you can prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect, and what is the will of God for your life. For I say through the grace that has been given me as your leader, to everyone who's among you, don't think so highly of yourself that you can't be corrected. But to think soberly, be willing to be introspective. Because God has given everybody a measure of faith to do what? To do what God created them to be. So each of us has the ability to change. We just have to be willing. And the way we can be consistent in our walk according to the word and will of God is to consistently read and study the word of God. Because those words coming into our heart begin to take life in our heart and then we begin to speak them out into our lives and the lives of those around us. Amen. Hey guys. Um, I don't think I have ever um, talked about one of my guitars in a church before, but uh, welcome to Union Missionary Baptist Church in Ridgecrest, California. Um, I've been here a couple times and it's been quite the adventure finding this place. I first heard about uh, this place kind of through a reference to a minister that used to be here when I was listening to a Sun House record that was recorded at Oberlin College in I believe in April of 1965. And in that record, Sun House describes himself as a young man trying to build a church by being a preacher. Um, he had um, some issues with alcohol and the things that young men have issues with. Um, and he was kind of living in a dichotomy of trying to be a preacher and then, you know, going to barrel houses and do what he was doing. And he found strength in pointing out uh, someone who was playing the blues and using a slide on their finger and he was very harsh with this person um, with his words and basically ran the person out of the town um, and then in no time Sun House was doing the exact same thing that this other person had done. Now you've seen me build this guitar and it started off as a kit in a factory somewhere and they shipped me the neck and, and the body and you've seen me all put that together and um, as we go through this guitar I'm going to talk about some of the challenges of life. That's an old oil can somewhere that uh, had been used up and thrown away. It was a vessel of something for something good that we all use and it ended up thrown away. Um, there is a coin right up here from Parchman Penitentiary in Mississippi and um, there was a time in this country where you could be walking down the street and someone would pick you up for no reason other than the way you look and take you off and put you in a prison. And while you were in prison, um, conveniently that was the time that it was time to pick crops and, and do the things that people would do. And then mysteriously after you were done working, they would turn you loose uh, sometimes there were blues songs about people not having the clothes, nothing but the clothes on their back, but it was a terrible time in Mississippi and a terrible time in our country. And we want to make sure that uh, we don't carry those biases with us even now when we look at other people. Um, a lot of matchbooks on here from different places in Mississippi. It's a Mississippi license plate. But most importantly on the back here, there's three pieces of wood. That Sun House person we're talking about went on to have a career recording in, uh, for Paramount Records in the 1930s. And this piece of wood right here is from the grounds of Paramount Records. Then he kind of drifted off and started having problems with alcohol, ended up in Rochester, New York, working for different railroads, Has a had a couple of stunts in prisons and things along the way. But... Um, he was rediscovered by a few people and then they were wanting to have him play blues festivals and like, but he couldn't even remember his own song. So they found a young man named 
Al Wilson, Alan Wilson that you all know from the band Canned Heat, who kind of taught him how to replay his songs in that piece of wood from where Alan Wilson died is in the back of the guitar here. And then this other piece of wood here is from where um, Reuben Lacey, the original person who went on to become a minister in this very church, that's from the can dump out back. There's some wood there. So um, this is kind of interesting to me. Um, Pastor Simpson here today, oddly enough, his message for the holiday and going into the new year was about words. And um, he said a couple of things that stuck out to me. Um, first off, he referenced John chapter 2 and read something in there that says, you know, sometimes we wonder why people come to us. Either they're bringing their problems to us as if there are problems or something like that. And he said that there is, or there are times in our life when our agency, I'm paraphrasing and putting this in my words, our agency, our individual agency, and the spirits we are given have skills that maybe only we have. So when we're seeing things coming at us all the time, like problems to fix, things to do, maybe they're coming to us because we have something that comes with our individual spirits or our agencies that allows that to happen. It's an opportunity for us. Next, um, a lot about words. You all know me, I talk all the time. I can't be quiet, but um, the idea was that when you just get in the habit of talking and not paying attention to what you're saying or doing, uh, he gave a reference of pulling up to a, a stop uh, signal that you go through. We don't have those in Acton, by the way. Uh, but the stoplight, and you're so used to it being green that when, when you drive up there every day that you might not notice it, that it's red and you just drive through one day and it has horrendous consequences. So sometimes the words you have to say about others, going back to Sun House and what he was saying about Reuben Lacey, um, can literally destroy someone to the point where they move out of your town or do whatever they do. Um, Sometimes in life you realize that in order to be on the right path, you need to leave one path and get on another. And I think the story of that is in uh, this church here and the reason I'm here today. So I'm glad I got to drive up to Ridgecrest. It's, I've been here a couple times and I'm glad that I can take this guitar, which has kind of been out <laughs> being played and in places different than this. And, Give it a strum in here, y'all know I can't play, but. All righty, thank you, Pastor Simpson and the congregation of Union Missionary Baptist Church. If you're feeling right now that maybe you could do something, find their website. You know what, I'll give you a link to it down below. Say hi, um, give them a gift, and make sure they keep this place open and going because, well, who knows what I would be if I didn't get a stop into one of these places. Hey, I'd like to give a shout out to my camera person, Kendra. You haven't seen her in a while. She's doing well. And I got her in church today. See ya.